Hello again, it's Mrs Holmes. I'm here again to teach you about equivalent fractions. Now this is the um, task that I left you with at the end of the last lesson, isn't it? I just want to see how some of you got on. There's a few bits there to sort of make it a little bit more tricky, wasn't there? Let's see if we can work out. So let's look at the um, square at the top there. What can you um, do to help you to work out one of those fractions using all of the skills we used last lesson? I wonder what you did. Did anyone count individually? Anyone count in rows? So if I was doing this, I would have looked at it in two ways. The first one would have been to say, well, how many squares are there in total? Because this would give me my denominator. And then how many of those squares were shaded? And that would give me my numerator. That would be one of the fractions I would have worked out. So counting along in the columns, I would have said 4, 8, 12, 16. So my denominator is 16. And I can see that 4, 8, 12, three of those columns are shaded. So one of the fractions could be 12 sixteenths. The other way I'd look at it, if I took a step back, I could see that there were four columns. So if I counted each of those as one part, just like we did with the teddy bears last lesson, then I could say that it's divided into quarters too. And three quarters is shaded. There you are, 12 sixteenths and three quarters. OK, and the next one along, it's also a square, isn't it? But that one's a little bit more tricky because you have only parts of um, four of the share squares on there shaded. Did you work out that if you put a smaller part with a bigger part, that would make a complete square? So what would that mean? How many would then be shaded in total out of that? 16. We know it's 16 because it's the same size as the uh, previous square that we looked at. That's right, two. Well done you. So two out of 16. How else could you look at that? Mm. Couldn't do the same as we did last time and have a complete row, could we? No. But it would be half of a row. So how many parts would there be then? Mm, it's a tricky question. Let's see if you've got that right. One eight. OK, so two sixteenths and one eighth are equivalent. Now moving on to our other two shapes. Now these have been put there definitely to test you. One of them is not complete, so you can't see how many parts there are. And the other one has got all different sized parts. But did you notice in the rectangle shape, there is definitely three parts you can see, and two of those parts have only got half of them shaded, just in different orientations. Like I was talking about last time with the number line, the orientation doesn't always matter if the part is equally divided. So that means that if you were able to put those two halves together, squish them back together, but that would mean two thirds of that shape would be shaded, wouldn't it? If you think of another equivalent fraction for that. There you go, four six, because we could divide them each into half again, which will give you six equal parts. And then four of those will be shaded. And the final shape, thinking again, you've got two there. If you can see the size, the type of shape it is, you notice that it's a, that's right, it's a hexagon, isn't it? The hexagon has how many sides? Six, yeah, I heard you, well done. So two out of six could be one of your starting fractions. But what else could we have it? Equivalent two. There's more than one answer, but using that shape there might help you. Ooh. Let's see. Did you get it? One third because you could have used those two parts that are shaded as being equivalent size to one part, and you'd be able to fit two more in, wouldn't you? So well done you if you got those right. 
OK, let's move on to today's lesson then. As I said, we are still looking at equivalent fractions. We're going to try and understand how equivalent fractions work so that when you come across them, it's a little bit easier to understand. This is our stem sentence for today. The whole is divided into so many equal parts and so many of these parts are shaded. So looking at the shape I've got there, how would we complete that stem sentence? The whole is divided into three equal parts. Well done, yes. And one of these parts is shaded. Excellent. We know that that's one third. What about if we have it divided again into more parts? So how many have we got this time? The whole is divided into, well done, six equal parts, yes. And of those six parts, how many are shaded? And two of these parts are shaded, aren't they? So that means one third and two sixths are equivalent. Let's try again. The whole is divided into, yep, yeah, well done, nine equal parts. And three of these parts are shaded, aren't they? Three out of nine, three ninths. And then here's another one. The whole is divided into 12 equal parts, and four of them are shaded, aren't they? Finally, this one we've definitely come across before. One third is the same as, if you can remember our teddy bears, that will tell you what this one is. Five fifteenths, well done. And finally, oh, there's lots of parts now, aren't there? What we can do is count how many there is in one part and multiply them if we need to, can't we? There's six of them in that shaded part. And there's three lots of six, six, 12, 18. So the whole is divided into 18 equal parts and six of these parts are shaded. So again, six eighteenths is equivalent to one third. OK, let's have a look. There we are. So it shows us our fractions. It means that they represent the same proportion, proportion being the size or part of the whole. OK, so let's have a look on a number line. So we've, we've discussed that they're the same proportion, the same size as one third. So where would these other fractions sit on the number line? Whereabouts would you expect them to be? Of course, they'd be at exactly the same point on the number line, wouldn't they? Because of the fact they are the same proportion. So although they're divided into more parts, they're the same size, the same proportion. So they would be in the same place on the number line, wouldn't they? You can see the same for three ninths, four twelfths, five fifteenths, six eighteenths, all at the same point on the number line as one third, because they are equal in size in the equivalent fractions. OK, so hopefully that's starting to make sense to you. But what we need to look at now is why that is. We know that they're equivalent. We know that they represent the same proportion, the same size of the shape. But what can we see? We start with the denominator. We've got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. But what can you see there? What's happening? What do you notice? That's right, it's increasing by three each time, isn't it? And that's to show the proportional relationship there between the fractions. That each time it's increasing by three, the denominator that is. What about the numerator? Yep, you can see that's going up one each time, isn't it? What does that mean? Well, when we look at the fraction itself, one third 
So the one in the numerator times by three is the relationship that's happening there, isn't it? So this must happen with all fractions that are the same value, which is why the two six is the two for the numerator times by three. That will give you six. All equivalent fractions work this way. And multiply by the same value as your original fraction that you're comparing it to. Okay. Oh, here's a tricky question for you. Is 11 33rds equivalent to 1 3rd? So what did we do? Do you remember? Let's see if I can draw this on here for you. So excuse my writing on here because it's a little bit tricky. So we do what we did with one third we should do this shouldn't we so there's 11 30 thirds oh, sorry wobbly and then we did this didn't we times by three now using your times table knowledge does that work because here you're counting so 11 22 33 that's three times 11 so yes that means what does that mean absolutely well done that means that 11 33rds is equivalent to one third let's try another one this time we've got six eighths so i'm just drawing my six eighths sorry it's a bit of a funny six. Oh, that's it we have to do our times by three now does that work six times three is count with me six twelve yep you're right eighteen well that can't be right then can it so six eighths is not equivalent to one third the other thing that might help you with that is if you think about it is one third on our number line if we look at our number line here is less than a half isn't it so a half is here let's draw that on and the third is most definitely less than that isn't it so can you think what might be an equivalent fraction in eighths some of you might work this out to half, I mean. Let's see, has anyone guessed? Let's see, you rook four eights. Six eights is more than that, isn't it? The six eights should be more like this way, shouldn't it? that's another reason why we know that that wouldn't be equivalent so sometimes you can use what you know about other size fractions to work out whether or not something is equivalent and other times you can use this calculation okay there are other calculations too so there's always methods to these ways of working out six eighths is not the same proportion as one third this is a greater proportion okay so for your first task I'm going to leave you with for this lesson. I want you to think about one fifth. And I want you to think about so if I write one fifth on here, whoops, it's a bit of a squiggly line, sorry about that. One fifth. Can you think about other fractions that will be equivalent? So if we follow what we did with one third, we'll get a numerator to our denominator. We have to multiply by five, don't we? hopefully that will give you a clue of what you might need to do i won't say any more so you could show your equivalent fraction in lots of different ways you could get some paper and try and fold it it's quite tricky you could draw some shapes um you know like a rectangle like whoops it's very squiffy sorry about that like this and try and make sure that it's in equal parts really would recommend using a ruler 
partners. Um, or another way of doing it might be to use something like this, the mass book, if you've got some square paper, that can help you. Because you can use the squares to help you to make them the same size. Um, or you could even use some teddy bears or other things around your house that we've used before to try and show an equivalent fraction. So we look forward to seeing that next time. I'm sure there'll be some that you'll think of that no one else will. So that's my challenge to you. Can you think of some slightly different ones? OK, so that's task one. Task two. Ooh, look at that. 32 160ths. What a big fraction. Or is it? That's the question. The numbers are large, aren't they? But is the proportion, you need to decide which one of these is not equivalent to one fifth, because one of them isn't. But it may not be that one. And sometimes people get confused about the size of the numbers. So there you go. So next time, my colleague, Miss Heaton, will pick up with these two tasks to see how you got on. And I know you'll be fantastic. And thank you very much for joining me over the last few lessons. See you then. Bye.